Sure. So, good. so the question is about, uh, well, you know, talking about some of these financial industry regulations, okay, sure, people understand that those might be helping big banks or something, but what about more difficult cases like health and safety regulation, government regulations on what kind of things can be in, in food or use of medicine that ostensibly, according to their proponents, are designed to protect the public from harmful practices of businesses and other people. How would we go about addressing what are some good arguments that we would use to challenge those kind of assumptions? I'm going to ask Bob to sure. start with. I don't know enough about medicine to talk about that, but let me. I have written about the FAA, all right, and so the, the federal government's regulation of airlines, because that's something where you know, the general public advice, you know, I don't think the federal government should be regulating air travel at all. Let the market settle it. That sounds crazy. And you know, people, oh, there'd be planes dropping out of the sky. You say, well, wait a minute. You know, the, the planes cost a lot of money for those airlines. Do you really think they're not going to take care of them? The, the, I say, okay, no, they wouldn't be dropping out of the sky. But clearly, we want the government to, it, it can't hurt to have the government come in and lay regulations on top of it to, you know, do random spot checks to see if the pilots are drunk to just send in random people to check the equipment and make sure it's up to date and that sort of thing. But I, I can argue that, no, actually, I think it, it is harmful because it would displace what the market would do instead. And just the, 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 the crucial thing here is to remember, just because the government has an official program and hires a bunch of people and gives them a job to do, doesn't mean they're actually going to achieve it. So just because they have this agency devoted to airline safety by itself doesn't prove air travel safer, safer uh, one example of what I mean is when there is a crash, you know, this is when, I, when I was growing up, it was a big thing in, in the Everglades, and it was, um, was, it, was it called Value Jet? Was that mm -hmm. what the name? What, what's it now? Is it Air Train? It yeah. Air so they changed their name. But, um, and that was a huge, and it was a big deal because they violated all of these regulations, right? And there were all these FAA things that they didn't do, and the FAA signed off on, and they shouldn't have. Did the FAA get its budget cut in half? No, they got more money. And there's like, this proves, look at how bad the market is. The FAA needs more money because they're understaffed. So clearly we got to give them. So it's this perverse thing where when a government regulatory body screws up, everyone just blames the free market. And so like there's, there's no way it could ever be the case. A, a different example is the government, the, the Bureau of Land, and uh, I forget their, they changed their name to the BLM is what they used to be called. More recently, the people who were supposed to be regulating big oil and they got in trouble. They were literally letting oil representatives throw parties where they were bringing in like cocaine and other things that are illegal and immoral and having a big party. And they had a cake that said, drill, baby, drill on it. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so these are the guys regulating the oil industry. And so the idea that we need big government to, to put a check on big, I mean, that's, that's very naive that in reality, what happens is, you know, the, the big regulated corporations co-opt the people regulating them. That's a nice cozy relationship. And so the one person, the people that don't benefit are the average consumers in the mom and pop shops. So I guess the, the quick answer would be the market can regulate too. So it's not that we're against third party oversight. It's we're saying when the government comes in and does it, it performs as well as the government does anything else that it tries. Yeah. I mean, this leads to a, a, a important general point. When we talk about the free market and what a society would be like if we had a free market without an interventionist state, well, we're not claiming that such a society would be a utopia, right? That it would be peace and love and kumbaya and everyone would be nice to their neighbors. No, I mean, it would. this society would still be populated by fallible human beings that uh, you know, are subject to whims and passion, and there would be bad people who want to do bad things and so forth. The question is, you know, what set of social arrangements uh, is most likely to minimize, will minimize the harm that's caused by all of the foibles that make us human beings, including ignorance and malice and apathy and so forth. So would you want the institutions that try to encourage safety, right? I mean, government safety regulators do not eliminate harm. Right? There are still plane crashes. There are unsafe, people get sick from food they eat. Medicine can do harm to people who take government approved medicine. So there's certainly no utopia. The government doesn't create a utopia. The question is what kinds of institutions, what kinds of individuals, what kinds of arrangements are going to mitigate, best mitigate that kind of potential harm? Would it be independent third party inspectors and certifiers who make a living from their reputation? for doing high quality work and for integrity and so forth. If you had a private market driven, you know, uh, 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 supervising authority that was throwing the kind of parties that Bob just described with the people supposedly inspected, what would happen to a, a private inspection company like that? They would go out of business tomorrow. 
right? Because they, they could only make money by having a reputation for integrity and honesty and, uh, you know, and high quality and so on. But government regulators have no incentives to be, uh, you know, to, to, to do what they ostensibly are charged to do. There's no connection between their performance and their reputation in the eyes of the public and the resources they have to control, their salaries, and, and so on. Right? So we're not claiming that we can wave a magic wand and make all bad things go away. We're saying that taking very difficult situations and putting the government in charge of making them right merely exacerbates the problem rather than making the problem better. We think we can minimize harm in other ways by relying on voluntary peaceful interaction among people rather than government coercion.